As we get ready to uh, get started on this Sunday morning service, we want to thank each and every one for being here at One Accord Church this morning. And also those of you viewing us live and on our television programs, we do want to thank you for tuning in to this morning's service. And we always want to take the opportunity to invite you to come join us at One Accord Church. The name speaks for itself. We believe in and doing it in one accord with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in one. Amen. We'd love for you to come join us and let's make a difference in this world. Amen. Amen. Well, this message is uh, kind of ties in with some stuff, but the, in fact, the time of this message is the King is coming. Now, I am going to be going in the book of Revelations, but with the saying of this, I want you to understand a little background about this message this morning. The Bible tells us that there's some great things ahead for Christian believers. Amen. We got some great things ahead, and, and before I go into the book of Revelations, I'd like to tell you some of the things that, that some great things that is ahead for you and I as believers in Christ. Um, what's one of the things? The rapture of the church. And uh, now, if I've, with that being said, I want you to, if you will, take your Bibles, turn with me to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, and I want to give you a breakdown before we go to the message, it's in, in that First Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, and with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, that's one great thing we have to look forward to, right? Well, if you, we've got to keep these rewards going, these great things, so that you can understand how blessed we are as Christians. The second thing is we are, we are blessed, and one more great thing ahead is the rewards that we receive in heaven. Uh, you got to believe it. Some people say, well, I serve the Lord. I don't want nothing back. Hey, look, the Bible says you're going to get it. Why not take it? I mean, if I offered you a million dollars, no, I really don't want it. I think every one of us would be like, give me mine. Well, guess what? The Lord says in his word in Revelation 22, 12, he said it this way. Listen to this scripture. He said in Revelation 22, 12, and behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. His what? Reward. And that's in Revelation 22, 12. So that means after all said and done and, and all that we go through, that when we stay strong and we believe and keep the faith in, in Jesus, that, that we have a reward. And that's a great thing ahead for us believers. And also another great event that's going to be taking place uh, is going to be the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, a lot of times people don't preach on this concept because they just don't understand it. But I'd like to go with you to Revelations chapter uh, 19. Uh, now, I did tell them Revelations 9, 19, but I'm going to ask you to change that. I'm going to go to Revelations 19, beginning with verse 11 through 21. That will actually cover that whole story, if you will. Kathy, that's a correction on my part. So we're going to go in Revelations 19, beginning in verse 11. And I suggest truly you read these scriptures because they're so important to the believer. And Revelations 19, 11 says, And I saw heaven open. Can you picture that? And behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doeth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. A lot of people have read this over the years. I just want to stop right there for one second. And his name is called... The Word of God. How can people say that they believe in Jesus and don't believe in the Word? You can't. 
because he is the word. He just said it and his name is called the word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses. The armies that followed him had white horses too. Clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it it should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepresses of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he, that, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying, To all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Listen about this supper, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, and that the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bound, both small and great. Now, before I go to these last three verses, I do want you to understand, somebody pictures this as a terrible, terrible thing. The flesh represents, represents sin. So please understand, the flesh represents everything that's destroying you from your spiritual walk. So take and think about that as you read that. He said, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, which is us. And the beast... And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophets that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And verse 21 says, And the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with with their flesh. Well, that's not probably what you'd like to hear, right? If that's going to pep you up, <laughs> it's going to be tough on you, right? It's a lot to swallow. But with that being said, I want you to understand something, that preparing for this entry, there was another entry that had to take place. And, and I want you to look at Luke 19.35. Now, Jesus is going to make the grand entry we just read in Luke 19, right? On a white horse. But anybody remember what happened in Luke 19.35? Well, let's look what happened in Luke 19.35 to set you up. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon a what? A coat. And they sat Jesus thereon. Well, the first time Jesus entered in, rode in to Jerusalem, the first time was on a coat. We just read the next time when Jesus rides in, it's going to be on a, a white horse. So we need to look and break down. We need to understand the kind of a breakdown of basically what John gives us um, about this last and exciting ride that Jesus is going to take. First of all, we read in verses 11 through 13 the, about the king's arrival. First of all, John tells us in Revelation that after the supper, the king rises and leaves. He knows because it's time for him to depart heaven for earth because heaven opened up to let Jesus come out. Now we must understand something about why Jesus must come out. First of all, Jesus has got to return to this earth because he promised us that he was going to return. Now how do you know that Jesus promised us that he can return? Because he said it in John 14, 3. Now mind you, as you look at this scripture, that the word of God, Jesus says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. But let me tell you, the middle one, the truth. Okay, I just read to you earlier that the Bible says that Jesus is the word of God, right? So Jesus is the truth. 
So the Bible is the truth. Okay, you got to get that connected together. And when you do that, in, in John 14, 3, he said this, just to prove the point. And he said, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will what? Come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. So he shows us right now that he's got to return. The Bible says, see, people say, I don't believe Jesus is going to return. But let me tell you, he is going to return. Right? No matter what happens, he is going to return. So we must get that in our mindset. Jesus is coming whether you're ready or not. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you're facing, you can't give up on that promise. He's coming back. And I thank the Lord for that. But look, let's take a break a second. Now, what, let's look at what's been happening on earth while Jesus has been gone. Well, first of all, the earth is in this particular time when we're talking about this tribulation period in Revelations, that the earth has become a pretty bad place like it is not already. Right? But let me tell you what he said. I want to see if I got Matthew 24, 21. Listen, he said, for then shall be a great tribulation. Now, this is the time whenever everybody's had the chance to get it right, but refuses to do it right, and has gone through this tribulation period. But notice what he said. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor even shall be. So this time when Jesus is coming back, it's going to be, the, nobody's seen or can imagine how bad it's going to be. He said it. Tribulation is, you've never seen nothing like this. Nothing. I mean, satanic deception, wow, we got that already. Disease, we got that already. But destruction, it's going to be such a high level that they can't even comprehend. Who would want to stay here and go through that? Who would want to, to deny Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior and face that? The king, the Bible says, is going to ride in on a white horse. I love that. Verses 11, 12, and 13, we read he's going to be faithful and true. He, and look, his name is still a secret in verse 12. And, but they also said in verse 13, he's, it's the word of God. The word of God is going to ride in on a white horse. But here's the good news. He's already given it to us. I mean, he's preparing us to ride with him. I don't know why this comes to my mind. You, I have a strange mind. But I picture it like this. I mean, look, how do I get trained to be in that army? Well, he's already given me all I need to ride with him. All I need to ride with Jesus is this, because this is him. So if I get the word of God and I absorb the word of God and it's inside of me, I can saddle up. I can saddle up. Can anybody even comprehend this? You're riding with Jesus. I know this is just... But I, I picture this. Riding with Jesus. The Bible says his eyes are as a flame of fire. That means that represents break down the flame of fire is judgment and the king's vesture is dipped in blood representing the blood the cross let me tell you something church before we go any further when we're talking about the king's arrival there ain't gonna be no hold on and wait there ain't gonna be uh oh I'm sorry I decided not to serve you I, I just I got caught up in the world I got caught up in the stuff and I, I, I just put you on a back burner let me tell you something. We need to step up our commitment level because, listen, God don't play. Yes, Jesus rode a coat to the crucifixion. I mean, to the, he rode a coat when he came in but, and, and he went to the town and, and prepared to be crucified. But he ain't coming in on a coat. He's coming in on a horse that's going to come straight down from heaven. And, 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 and he ain't going to play. He ain't going to look at you. I'm sorry you forgot. Here, let me give you a chance. No, sir, buddy. We better get it right now if we want to be a part of his army. And we, we don't realize that with that being said. And, and the second part is the king's army. In verse 14, 
I love this because most people don't like to hear this. Anybody scared of horses? I love them myself. They've hurt me a time or two, but, but guess what? You won't have no fear. There's no fear in heaven. So some of you that ain't never saddled up, guess what? You're going to saddle up. No fear, no suffering, no pain. I look, I look between the lines. That means I won't fall off. I'm going to be traveling spiritually, a spiritual high. You know why? Because my flesh is going to be gone. Because the Bible says it's going to take all that away. So I'm going to be like Jesus. Is that not true? So just picture this, the king's army. Now, who, who has joined this army that Jesus talks about in heaven? Because he just, I just read to you in verse 14. Well, let me tell you who's joined the army. Revelations 5, 9 said it this way. I, I want to go to Revelations 5, 9 to clear this up. He says, and they sung a new song saying, thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by the blood out of every kindred, tongue, and people, and nation. Let me tell you something. That means whenever we accept Jesus Christ, that we've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. The Scripture tells us that an army, is, how do we know this is the army? Because it says an army is clothed in fine linen, white, clean linen. That's those that have accepted Jesus Christ and have been cleansed of all their sins. Those are the ones that's going to be riding on that horse. Those are the ones that's going to be in the army. Now, those that, those that how do you know that your, your linens is clean? You've got to understand, before you can get clean, you've got to be dirty. How many of you take a bath because you're clean? Right? As a kid, I didn't never know I was dirty. I hated to take them. They'd come in there. When you didn't take them, mama went on you with a brush. And you wished you'd have done it the easy way. She would scrub behind your ears till you had no ears. <laughs> but the thing about it, we, we got to understand this. How's that a, 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 compared to us spiritually? We got to understand this. Before you get clean, you got to know you're dirty. Well, I, I got a, this Isaiah 64, 6 tells me that I was dirty. Listen to what Isaiah 64, 6 says. But we are all as unclean thing, and all our righteousness are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our inequities like the wind have taken us away. He said we are all as what? Filthy rags. See, th these clean robes that we've got on now were furnished to us by our king. See, whenever you accept Jesus Christ, it's like, see, how many of you, whenever you accepted the Lord and, and you've seen him in your life, you felt this, you felt lighter, you, you felt better, you, you felt something you never felt before, right? Somebody just dive off the deep end with me spiritually. That Jesus, whenever you accepted Jesus, he put a robe on you. But, it, but when that robe went on you, your dirt was washed away. And whenever that dirt's washed away, you become a child of God. And, and John even tells us that the army is riding on white horses like the king. We, we are going to be loaded up, ready for Bible. This, I mean, battle. This army is to rule and reign with Jesus. Let me tell you something. And, and if you read his word and understand it, whenever this army comes back at last, listen, the devil is going to get paid back. Everything he's ever done, anything he's ever tried to do to tear you down, listen, he, look, you have power and authority over him, but you get to ride in with a white horse and help wipe him out. Amen. Now, if that ain't something to look forward to, I don't know what is. We just want to quit and go home. <laughs> Because just everything that we're going through, no matter how much Satan is thrown at you, there's going to be a day of atonement. And if we've accepted Jesus Christ and we join the army, we're going to be part of that atonement. Jesus didn't need our help. Why do you say the army, why do you say the army is going to ride with us? So we can help. So we can whoop up on every evil demon there ever has been so that we can get them back for what they've done. Payback. 
Amen. Anybody ready for payback? Well, let me go on and tell you something. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is already ready. Why hasn't he opened the skies of heaven? Why hasn't heaven opened up and Jesus ascended? Because I tell you why. Because the Bible says he wishes that none should perish. That all should have eternal life. See, the Lord has given us ample time. What about all these people that are not saved and don't know the Lord? Well, he's going to make sure they have opportunity. Just like, why do you have preachers? To give people opportunity so that they will be reached. So that they have opportunity to serve the Lord. And we got to understand this. There's going to be a day coming whenever if we're not a part of the army, we're a part of the enemy. And you, all you got to do is look around you and see, but there's another part of this message we don't really like to have to mess with. Because we all want everything pretty and wrapped up in a pink bow and just, we want it, the, the, the gospel message to be something that we just, so sweet. Oh, it's so good. I can do what I want to and live like I want to and it's all going to be good. Well, let me go on and tell you what's going to happen. That's the third part of this message. The king is coming. The king's anger. Church, yes, Jesus went to the cross for our sins. He suffered persecution. He suffered more than any human being could ever. But let me tell you, the suffering's over with when the king shows up this time, the Bible says that we read in verse 15 through 21, he is going to rebuke the nations with his word. He's going to rebuke this nation. I hope the government, I hope the president just got so bored he turned me on. See, he is going to rebuke the nation with his word. See, let me tell you, one nation under God is what this nation was founded under. And let me tell you something. When this becomes, uh, well, an option rather than a command, then let me tell you something. When we talked about he's going to rebuke the nations, he's going to, you didn't do it my way. You had opportunity. Somebody listen to God. I don't care who you are. If you're not doing it this way, Somebody's going to stand accountable in this nation for not doing it God's way. We want to end all this mess where people are shooting up the churches, where people are going bombing buildings. Let me tell you how to do it. Get a nation under God. Get a nation that, that has the fear of God in it. Quit fearing those people in foreign countries. You need to fear Almighty God. We need to fear the one that brought this planet to be and can take this planet out. We have the wrong fear. We're getting security systems for everything in this world, but we're not realizing that the greatest security system we got is this. He's going to rebuke these nations and, 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 and all the explanations is going to be over with. He's also, Jesus is going to rule them with a rod of iron, he said in Revelations. Now, let me tell you what that means. Right? Wrong. Can you imagine how court systems if we had right, wrong? Did you do it? Yes, wrong. Can you imagine what our system would be like if everybody that sat up there that passed down judgment was a Christian? But guess what? There's going to be a time coming when Jesus is going to rule his way. Also, too, Jesus is going to end the battle of Armageddon. You've seen the movies. They, they, don't even, they don't even come close. The Bible has told us, and I love what he said in this, that he said he was going to, that when the angel standing in the sun, he cried with a loud voice saying, to all the fowls and flies that flies in the midst of heaven. He, look, Jesus says, come on, Armageddon. Come on, we're going to go down there and wipe out every single thing down there that's walking in flesh and not in the spirit. There's not going to be nothing left, great or small. Let me tell you something. When Armageddon hits, it's over. But there's no reason why we should be on the bad end of that deal. We have opportunity for thousands of years that we could walk with Jesus now and come back on the right hand of Jesus rather than the wrong. 
People tell me, well, I, I have time. If, when, whenever Jesus raptures the church, then I know I'm in trouble. I'll get it right. I got news for you. You won't. I don't mean to break this down to you, but I'm just to be honest with you. If you can't serve the Lord when it's given to you on a platter, you will not survive the, the fierceness of Satan whenever you try to do it. You won't survive it. I can save you the trouble. You will not make it. If you don't choose to do it now, you won't be able to do it then. Because Satan will use every tactic known to make sure you don't. Also, the Bible says he cast the beast and the false prophet into the lake of fire. I want you to notice if you read the scriptures with me, he ca that Satan is casting there alive. And he's going to be cast in the lake of fire for what? Eternity. It's over. And say, look, church, what's so sad about it? I'm glad it's over for him. Because he chose the path he chose to follow. And those that followed him chose to follow him. But what's so bad about it is we don't realize it, that if we don't serve Jesus and we don't commit to serving the Lord and we don't quit playing church and start being the church, that we might be in that place. Some people says, well, I'm saved. Well, you know what? Faith without works is dead. Yeah. See, the Lord is looking for people that are part of an army. What does army mean? It means you've got to be ready. You've got to be armored up. You've got to be ready to fight the fight. You can't be sitting there saying, well, I'm just going to hide in my room, in my recliner until Jesus comes. Let me go on and break the news for you you'll probably be sitting right there. Because you got to realize Jesus didn't come to this earth and go through what he went through so that we could just passively do what we want to do. The king is coming. And there's only one thing that we need to answer. Are we going to be ready? He, Jesus and his army is going to complete the task and they're going to get the victory. And they're going to do the victory through the word. The whole point of him mentioning the word of God is because we've been given the victory over Satan. There's no reason why we got the, you want to see an explosion of victory? Start doing the word of God in your homes, in your family, in your life. And you just start letting the word of God be your strength every day so that you can experience the coming of the king. What do you mean, preacher? The coming of the king is also spiritual. You want the king to take over your problems? Put him in charge of it. Read the word of God. Obey the word of God. Live the word of God so you can feel the presence of God. Now, at this time in Revelations, Christ is revealed as the king of kings and the Lord of lords. Right? Well, let me ask you a question. We all have to ask ourselves this question. Is Christ, is he the king and the Lord of our lives? We need to stop resisting the king. We need to surrender completely to the king. Because if we don't, this world is going to be surprised. Because Revelation shows us that Jesus is coming back. And let me tell you something, and I, I know this because I used to live in terror. I thought that I could accept Jesus Christ, and well, if I'm not doing right, maybe he won't show up today. Let me tell you something, Jesus, nobody, nobody knows the day nor hour nor time when Jesus has come. But let me, I, I don't want to go there and, and beat you up and scare you to death so you'll come to the altar. That's not what I want to do. I want to you to see what the Lord has showed me. He said, Greg... I've already given you what you need to live in victory. He said, who wouldn't want to live eternity with Jesus? He said, but you don't have to wait till I get here to do it. He said, you can walk in victory right now. He said, because that same word that's going to come in when heaven opens is the same word you've got right now. Amen. You don't have to wait to meet him when you see him. You can meet him today. And when you meet him today, you can live in victory today. Man, look, we don't need to all, look, everybody, and I'm, I'm just using this as a paraphrase, we don't need to be riding around on donkeys spiritually. Jesus has already paid the price. When are we going to put up the donkey and get out the white horse? 
When are we going to quit walking around like the victim and be the victor? When are we going to saddle up and start riding with Jesus because he's already came and give us himself? Church, we need to saddle up. We need to ride with Jesus this morning. You don't need to come up here with your donkey. You need to park that donkey and you need to pick up the word of God and ride up here on a white horse and claim who you are. It's time we all sat down and realized that we've already got it. The word is ours. Everything else that happened is cherry on top. But if you're living in defeat, it's because you're still riding around on that defeated donkey. Don't ask me why I said that. But you don't have to do that no more, church. Get up. Rise up. And look beside you. There's Jesus. Amen. He's right there. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. If you walk out this door with what you walked in this door, it's because you chose not to saddle up with Jesus this morning. Church, let's, let's get back to where we need to be. Let's take sin serious. And let's take righteousness serious. And let's realize we only got one chance to get this right. We better do it now. This all is open, church. No matter what you're going through, let's ride with Jesus today.